Hey everyone, my name is Wendy Blight and I'm on staff with the Online Bible Studies team as our Biblical Content Specialist. I'm honored to come alongside you and welcome you as we begin week one of our Online Bible Study, Pointing to the Promise. Each week, we have the honor of hearing from the author of our study, Kayla Ferris. I'll open our time together with a few questions and Kayla will share a message from her heart and provide a challenge or two to help us slow down and have a moment of reflection each week. Now, why a moment of reflection? Because if you're like me, it's easy to get lost in the busyness of the season and forget that the true purpose of Christmas is to celebrate the birth of our Savior. It's our prayer that these moments of reflection will slow us down and refocus our hearts and minds on Jesus, even if it's only for a few minutes. Every week of study, we'll choose one word to ponder. This week, our word is promise. Did you know that God fulfilled every promise He made about Jesus? Oh, how I wish we had time to walk through all those promises. Now, let's hear from Kayla. Kayla, how could we remember our God is a God who keeps His promises as we begin our study? Hey everyone, my name is Kayla, and I am so excited to study Pointing to the Promise alongside you. Um, I live in central Kentucky with my husband and our four kids, and I can't wait to unpack these next six weeks of study with you. So, Wendy, your question about how we can remember that our God is someone who keeps His promises is such a great question. And this is what I love about the Christmas story. If I were to ask you, what is Christmas really about? You know, you might mention it's about Jesus being born as a baby. And you're absolutely right. But what does this mean about God's promises? See, way before Mary found out that she was pregnant, all the way back to creation, God made big promises. Um, he promised a man named Abraham that through his family, the entire world would be blessed. God promised a man named David that through his family, there would come a perfect king who would reign forever. To Isaiah, God promised a child that would be born of a virgin, and he would be Emmanuel, God with us. To Micah, God promised that this child would be born in Bethlehem, on and on the promises of God's game. But guess what? Abraham, David, Isaiah, Micah, countless others, they never saw the promises fulfilled in their lifetime. Do you think they ever had questions or doubts or, you know, maybe they wondered if they had even heard God correctly? Would God really do what he said he would do? And then came the first Christmas. And friends, the moment a Jewish virgin became pregnant and walked to Bethlehem to register as a family from the line of David, and then that baby, who was also God himself, took his first breath. All of a sudden, we had every proof we could ever possibly need that yes, God absolutely keeps his promises. Which means, if God promises that his love will protect you, Romans 8, 38 through 39, it does. If God promises that his peace will guard you, Philippians 4, 7, then it will. And if he promises that his righteous right hand is holding you, Psalm 139, 10, then you can know beyond the shadow of a doubt that you are close. I needed that promise this week. And even if you feel like the Old Testament believers, like, you know, God has given promises, but you know, I'm not sure I can see them right now, then hold on, friend. Keep believing. Because see, remember, we asked how we can remember that God keeps his promises. And it's right here. The Bible is our proof. And we can read it and we can see that everything God promised about Jesus, he did. This is our proof. So I have a simple activity for our moment of reflection this week. Um, I've taken a sticky note and I just wrote one word on it, proof. And I just wanna encourage you to maybe do the same and then stick this note on your Bible. And then when you see this note this week, I just want you to tell yourself, you know, that Bible is my proof that God keeps his promises. 
and he will keep his promise to me. Have a great week, friends. Kayla, how I love those promises you gave us at the end from Romans, Philippians, and my favorite, Psalm 139. What a way to start our study. I can't wait to grab a sticky note and write proof on it as a reminder that our God is the ultimate promise keeper. So are you ready to dive in? Let's get started on week one of our study guide. It's filled with truth from God's word. And if you've been with us for a while at Proverbs 31, you know we believe when you know the truth and live the truth, it changes everything.